All right, just got back from a morning of metal detecting in the PHEV, and I don't know what the numbers are in terms of amp hours, battery. I know it was 38 point something last time I plugged in the Watchdog app. It's getting lower because I had to stick to all the 40 zones in town, and I'll show you guys the numbers. Fantastic numbers, but it's getting harder and harder to get over 40 kilometers because I'm at less than three quarters battery. I've got to go 40 kilometers or less. You know, if I can cruise along at 40, so here's the numbers. So we just did 42 kilometers even and 100% electric. The engine did not start at all. And look at that, 12.6 kilowatt hours. And that just shows you that I was driving very conservatively. I, I, I mean, it's very hard to hit those kind of numbers. You've got to be doing 40 kilometers an hour or in that air, that range, you know, you're not doing 60 or 70 kilometers an hour. Um, so I have to do that. And when we do, we can still get 42 kilometers. The beauty of this thing is even after four years, right, a full morning of three hours of adventures cost me 85 cents, you know, driving around in this thing. I'm plugged back in and charging up again. And this afternoon I'll go out and do another adventure. Had I taken the truck this morning, that would have cost me about $16 and driving around. So definitely the PHEV is still, you know, it's still an amazing thing to own and experience. Okay guys, PHEV update time. So tomorrow the car is going in back to Mitsubishi for further battery testing, okay? It's also getting the battery reset, which I have not received this year. I'm gonna plug in the Watchdog app. We're gonna take a look at the numbers we have right now. I'm also taking a run out of town. We will be able to completely drain the battery. Uh, we'll get some numbers on the Watchdog app for that. And then I will update you guys further after the car is brought in by Mitsubishi and we find out whether they're gonna be giving me a new battery or what number we're at. Um, we were at 75% last time I checked and it's been a couple months. We've been running the car this summer. I haven't really checked it. So let's take a look at the Watchdog app right now. I also got a note from a person who watches the videos. Back in May, if you guys remember, we were having lots of problems with the car running, the car starting when it was in forced electric mode. And we couldn't figure out when I came back from a 10 day vacation and started using the car, it seemed to be working normal. Well, this person contacted me and said, possibly, that while I was gone for 10 days, I had the car plugged in. And so it was doing its own cell smoothing and equalizing the batteries while I was gone. And that could be a possible solution as to why it's been working pretty good all summer. But let's plug in the app and see what we've got for numbers. Okay, so we are starting live data. I believe that said new capacity. Okay, capacity has changed. 28.9 amp hours, so minus 0 0.9 amp hours. We have lost another amp hour since the last time we ran the app. Okay, so we are down to 72.3% and 28.9 amp hours is where we currently sit before I take it in here and get anything done on it. So what is their battery recharge gonna bring us up to? Usually I gain like 10%, so we would still only be at 82%. But we'll figure that out when we get the car back. I'll just take a look at our battery cards right here. 72.3, 28.9, and today's date, 22nd of September. Okay. And we can see back here is June. So we've put 9,000 kilometers on the car this summer. And we've lost 0.1% overall from down here in June. And we've lost over here 2.2%. Uh, and then 1.1 amp hours since June is what we've lost. And if we look back last June, so a year and a half ago, um, after we had our battery service done, we were at 87%, 35.2 amp hours. 35.1. So we're gonna go and we're gonna completely drain the battery and we're gonna record this trip just to see how many kilometers we get. I'm probably gonna try to keep it to 70 kilometers an hour or less 
and it's gonna be a mix of pavement and back roads driving because I'm heading out to the country. So this will be a good guesstimate. I'll, I'll actually try to push it as far as I can. Let's let's put it that way, guys. We'll have the average speed and all of that. Um, oh, it, the, the uh, watchdog app just disconnected and we're only 100 yards from the end of the driveway. So this is the problem with running this app. I can't get true data quite often. It disconnects and then you're trying to piece multiple trips together. Anyway, I've reset the tripometer. I'll be able to show you guys how far I go. And all I wanted today was the battery states and numbers off of the watchdog app, so that's fine. So what we'll do is just do our regular test. Gary will drive until the battery's empty. How far did we get? And it will be, like I say, a mix of up to 70 kilometers an hour, no more than that. And I will try to coast, as always, as far as I can. And so with the battery at 72%, how far will we go? I'm gonna say probably around 35 kilometers, but we'll find out in a second. Okay, so I'm at my destination and I still have a little tiny bit uh, of electric left. We've come 26 kilometers and we're at 100% and 19.3 kilowatt hours is our average use. And I'll just show you guys, uh, we have five kilometers guesstimate left. So that would have put us right around 31 kilometers. Now, let's take a look at the trip really quickly here. This is, uh, it kept disconnecting, but we'll take a look here at this top one. And it was 20 kilometers we went, and our average speed was 51.8 kilometers with a maximum of 110. I jumped on the highway just very quickly for a couple hundred yards, up to 110, first ramp off, back down to an average of 51. So, not uh, terrible for only having 75% battery, but let's see what we get uh, once they do the battery charge and reset. What kind of numbers will we get tomorrow? I don't know. All right, guys, so I am at Mitsubishi. I am picking up the PHEV, and I just uh, with, spent, you know, half hour, 40 minutes here talking to the service desk. The first thing they said to me was, uh, we sent in video because I have a OBD2 reader plugged in, sending out Bluetooth to my phone so I can run the PHEV watchdog app, and they're like, that might void your warranty. And I was like, well, that's news to me because uh, the guys, the service manager from before had me collecting data for them. They were trying to figure out how long it took for the car to actually drop 0.01 amp hours so they could send that in to Japan and say, you know, it's an average of 10 days, 12 days, whatever it was. And so they had me freaking collecting data for them. And now I'm being told by the new service manager that this might void my warranty. And I'm like, yeah, well, I'll see Japan on that one. We'll uh, we'll have to debate that one because all it is is a Bluetooth dongle that sends out the information that they get on their screen. It sends it to my phone. I mean, come on. Anyway, the good news is the car, after a full BMU uh, update, there was some kind of new update, the, the young guy here was saying uh, that they did, as well as the battery reset. I'm back up to 40 amp hours. I'll show you guys that right now. So there is the new card 99.8 percent battery 39.9 amp hours and just as a reminder this is what it was at before we brought it in 72.3 percent 28.9 amp hours so we gained 11 amp hours that's going to give me 20 more kilometers in range per charge guys i get almost two kilometers per amp hour so is this going to hold up is this are these new numbers you know is the battery going to stay at this level and keep dropping 0.01 amp hours every two weeks like it did before if that's the case then i don't need a new battery that's as good as it is, as it was when the car was new okay so the final update for now on the phev is i drove it to toronto the day after i had the updates done and uh, i'll zoom in on the screen to show you guys in two days, we've already lost 0 0.02 of an amp hour. So usually it used to take 10 days or so and it would drop 0 0.01. So this is what I was kind of afraid of is that there is actual degradation to the battery. So even though their software shows that they've reset it and smoothed the cells and we were back to 39.8, 39.9 amp hours, okay, was what it was reading when I got it back from the garage. Two days later, we're down to 39.7. So I think what happened the last time we had the reset done was after 10 days, it had already dropped almost a full amp hour, right? So we were down to 38 point whatever. And I think that's what's gonna happen again. We will document that over the next little bit for this video here. I'll end on this 
I'll show you guys this, that we, we're down to 99.3% battery and 39.7 amp hours two days after we had the reset done. So it's already dropping and it's dropping quickly. This is where we were at when they did the reset and two days later, this one up here. Ah, <laughs> this one up here is where we're at. 99.3%, 39.7 amp hours. This might be a good point for me to say that I kind of glossed over earlier as well. I was pissed off with the dealership for saying, um, you know, when I walked in the first thing, the, um, I, she's not the service manager. I don't know what she is. She's the person who meets and greets you there, but she's been there a couple of years and the service manager that I dealt with before Don is gone. He's no longer there, but all of those guys knew that I have a OBD2 reader, which is a Bluetooth dongle, which sends the PHEV uh, app to my phone, right? The information to the watchdog app. And she says, we've set, we've recorded a video and showed them that you had this plugged into your car. I said, sweetheart, it's not a secret, right? I said, usually when they're done doing the updates to my car, they're nice enough to plug it back in for me. I was, you know, I'm, it, it, she just kind of attacked me as soon as I walked in there saying, you know, this is gonna void your warranty. This is what she's saying to me. And I just kind of blew her off, brushed her off, like, come on, give me a break. Like, okay, the service manager and the guy who sold me the car helped me pick out the dongle <laughs> that I used because they were using the same one already. Like, I'm just so annoyed with this whole process. Anything they can do to stall now and say, well, we don't want to give you a battery and this, and you know, we're gonna, we're gonna void your warranty. Well, guess what? I paid for the extra warranty. And if you want to go down that route, I'll see you in court is basically gonna be my response to that. Give me back my 1500 bucks for the extra warranty. We'll call it null and void. You'll never see my car again. You'll never sell me another Mitsubishi again. I'm already, you guys know, I've already said, I will not buy another Mitsubishi because of this battery issue, having to bring the car in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys a friend of mine. He is actually the service manager for True North Chevrolet. Uh, he's my squash partner. He drives a Plymouth Dodge, whatever the van is, hybrid, plug-in hybrid, okay? He's had it longer than I've had mine. And I said to him, Tim, how many times have you had to bring yours in and have the battery reconditioned? And his reply, never. I said, are you still getting the same kilometers that you were getting before? He says he is. So we know that that model has a 14 kilowatt hour battery. Mine has a 12 kilowatt hour battery. His vehicle is one year older. We can do some tests and we can see driving, I'll drive it. So my style of driving, can I get the same distance on his vehicle as I get with mine? And I've had to bring mine in. It, mine's been brought in six times for battery service, right? So this is where I'm going with this. This is ridiculous that Mitsubishi is still going down this route and collecting, charging normal people. They don't charge me, but they charge the rest of you poor suckers. I don't know, it's a couple hundred bucks to get your battery serviced and we'll recondition it. And you'll get 12% back. Right now, I'm getting 20 more kilometers per charge than I was a week ago. This is how detrimental it is with these small batteries. If you can get 20 more kilometers per charge, that is night and day difference when you're only getting 45 or 50 kilometers. Like, come on, this is crazy. It's not rocket science. Anyway, stay tuned, guys. More videos and more testing to come. This battle's not over. I want a new battery in my PHEV, and if I don't get it, we'll see what happens. And we'll see how this one reacts after being reset and smoothed. Where, where am I going to be in a month from now? I don't know. Well, I think I know. But we'll prove it one way or another. We'll prove it on the channel.